discuss today, which I'm sure some of you are devastated about. Um, but you should all have a thick pack or two um, in your goodie bags, which I'm sure you can enjoy later. I guess only half past ten, so now is probably not the time to open them. Um, we're going to start off with just a few questions, so if you could raise your hands, um, uh, that would be great for to ask. So firstly, does anyone, or has anyone in the room, heard of the ideas art? I'm sure many of you have. Okay, so a good handful of you, it's a good start. Um, and did, did anyone watch the programme that was on two or three weeks ago? Um, Eddie Izzard, Marathon Man, it's on, I think it was BBC Two around three or four weeks ago. Did anyone see it? Okay, not many of you. Don't worry, that's not a disaster. Won't ruin the talk. <laughs> um, and the last question, for those of you who know who Eddie Izzard is, who thinks he could start a business from scratch and turn it into something of uh, serious scale and success, something like an Amazon or a Google or a known tech business like Instant. Does anyone think he could do that? Okay. Again, not many of you. Um, hopefully I'll make sense of, of those questions a bit later on. Um, but for those of you who didn't see the programme, Eddie Izzard ran 27 marathons in 27 days. Through South Africa in 40 degree heat. He attempted the challenge four years earlier um, and had been unsuccessful after medics found blood in his urine. Um, I think it was only after the third or fourth marathon that this happened and he obviously had to pull out. This time round though, he was successful. He managed to complete the challenge. Now, what's amazing is that Eddie Izzard is not an athlete. He didn't even train for the event. He turned up the day before he was due to start. Um, no acclimatisation to the heat. Nothing. And for most of us, even thinking of running a 10k, that kind of preparation is unimaginable. And the start of the challenge was absolutely brutal for him. He was struggling to adjust to the heat. He had at the back of his mind the fact he'd failed uh, four years earlier and had been unable to complete it. He was in excruciating pain as his body was basically telling him to stop. He was going too far. The terrain that he was running on was rugged, so he was um, hurting his back, hurting his joints, hurting his feet. And he was admitted to hospital on two separate occasions as medics were concerned for his overall well-being. And as a result of being admitted to hospital, he missed the day of the challenge, which meant if he was going to succeed, he was going to have to do a double marathon on the last day, which obviously he would want to do. Now most of us would never even think to attempt a challenge like that. Most of us would think a challenge like that probably isn't possible even for an athlete. And for those of us, I haven't run a marathon, but for those of you who do run a marathon, doing it in cool climate conditions is hard enough, never mind 40 degree heat. But what's evident when you, when you watch this programme uh, is that this had nothing to do with the ADSR's physical, physical state. It was a purely mental challenge. And his doctor, who was with him um, for a lot of the trip, said the biggest muscle in, in his body is his head. And once that starts pumping, there's almost nothing that will stop him achieving something. So, a wee bit about myself, and we'll again provide a bit of context of this. I started a business around two years ago. And I know all about the kind of mental turmoil that goes with, with starting a business. Almost at every hurdle there's something that seems like it's trying to push the business over the edge. And although I'm not going to compare what we're doing and the challenges that we're going through trying to start a business, um, it's a completely different challenge to what, what Eddie did, but it has the same kind, of, um, same kind of effect, same kind of mental challenge just over a longer period of time. So having watched the programme, I was fascinated by how he'd managed to do it, I wanted to learn. 
what made Denny be able to complete this? What was going on in his head? And was there anything that I could apply to my business, to my life, that would ultimately uh, make us more successful? So to do this, I started looking at other people, other uh, challenges, other uh, competitions, just to see if I could find a trend that would give some indication as to um, whether there was some kind of secret ingredient here. And given that we're in St Andrews today, um, I started looking at golf, it seemed appropriate. Um, and it's widely regarded that the top golf tours in the world, so the US PGA Tour um, and the European Tour, these tours are filled with unbelievable golfers. They're all amazing at what they do, and in terms of skill set, it's very little to separate those golfers. Yet only a handful of them ever win tour events, and even fewer win the major events that happen four times a year. So what is it about those individuals that are able to get over the winning line compared to the ones that aren't? What is it that drives them on? If you look at the SAS, the SAS is regarded as one of the toughest military tests there is, not just in the UK but anywhere in the world. And that's the, that's the challenge to get into the SAS. And often it's the people who aren't necessarily in the best physical condition who are able and who are successful in getting entry to the SAS. So what is it about those individuals that have chosen to put themselves in that position to go through such a rigorous and intense process and ultimately become successful? And then lastly, I went to a, a talk done by Chris Hoy. Um, I think it was last year at some stage, and he told a story about when he was a younger boy, and he was in a it was a meeting with the rest of his cycling team, and his coach asked them what their aspirations were within the sport, and Chris said that he wanted to become I think it was Olympian or world champion, and the rest of his teammates kind of staggered or chuckled at this because he wasn't even the best writer in the team at that point in time, yet yeah, he went on to become probably the most decorated Olympian, certainly British Olympian of our time. So whether it's Eddie, whether it's the golfers, whether it's the SES or Chris Hoy, there's something about some individuals, something astonishing about some individuals that allow them to achieve remarkable feats. So, what I found were two things, two things that I believe um, are transferable from physical activities to starting a business or whatever that challenge may be. The two things I found were, one, these individuals are hugely motivated by something or someone. And secondly, they have kind of a knowledge, an ability to overcome challenges, to, to block out that voice in their head which says you can't do something or that a challenge is too great that you should stop. So motivation and a knowledge and ability to overcome challenges. If we look at them individually, motivation is an easy one. You either care about something or you don't. Doesn't mean you laugh, doesn't mean you cry, doesn't mean you're angry. You don't become the best golfer in the world if you don't have an obsession for the sport, a real love that drives you on. Because if you don't have that, you just won't practice as hard. You won't compete at the level that's required to, to triumph over all those other players. And it's no coincidence that people who choose to run marathons do it with the added motivation of a charitable cause, raising money for a charitable cause, that's close to their heart. But maybe this our man or attempted the challenge the first time around, he wasn't actually doing it for charity, he was doing it purely off his own back. Second time around, he was raising money for sport relief. And by his own admission, that was a big factor um, in his success. Second time around, you could see that that helped drive him on. But from watching the programme, that clearly wasn't his main motivation or inspiration. It was Nelson Mandela. 
and he ran also 27 marathons in 27 days, um, because that was the length of time that Nelson Mandela was, was in jail in Robben Island. Um, and you could tell from watching that he was a real hero of ADS Arts. He was hugely motivated by what he had achieved. Um, he almost felt like the challenge that he was doing, regardless of how great we see it, was almost insignificant to what Nelson Mandela had gone through uh, 27 years in jail. And you could tell he almost felt embarrassed if he wasn't able to complete it. But the second one, the second point of confidence Ability and knowledge to overcome challenges is much harder uh, to explain and obviously to put into practice because it's not something these people weren't born superheroes, they are trained their minds, um, whether through situations they've just found themselves in or by forcing themselves through several challenges over many years until they become seriously mentally tough. But actually, research shows that. A child's adolescence years are the a kind of critical development stage for helping children understand how to overcome challenges without significant adult input. It's a really important step in development and if children go through that process they are much more likely to go on and achieve great things in later life. And sadly many children, some of the most successful people today have sadly been through challenges as children um, as a result of their personal circumstances um, but it does go to show that that stage of a child's life is, is critical for developing mental toughness but that's not to say that at any stage of your life you can develop kind of mental, mental strength that helps you overcome challenges if you would look at um, an example um, if you were to join the gym, let's say you had exercise for many years you don't go and jump in the treadmill for a few hours or go and try and lift the heaviest weight in the gym because you probably wouldn't be able to do it. Mentally you see that as a failure um, and to be honest you would struggle to really generate any form of incentive or inspiration to go back to the gym. So you start small, you do maybe 15 minutes, you start lifting lighter weights and gradually you build up over a period of time, you build confidence your mind doesn't have as many doubts because you're progressing and soon enough you'll look back and you're lifting weights or running lengths of time that were almost unimaginable when you when you first joined the gym and it's about building that experience, building that kind of ability to, to continue through challenges and it's the same when you run a marathon you don't go and try and run 26 miles in your first training session you have to build it up gradually and it's just about building that mental toughness. And all what I talked about there are physical challenges. They're not really physical challenges, it's all in the head. It's only your mind that will tell you to stop going to the gym or maybe stop doing a marathon halfway. It's really your mind that's, that's in charge there. But one thing we haven't really touched on is emotional challenges that people overcome. And if we go back to ADS art, Emotional challenges are often the most influential on an individual and their ability to, to go through any challenges put in front of them. When Eddie was a child, he, he suffered a family bereavement. He also realised he was transgender and went through the process of having to tell his friends, his family, um, and then live with that in the public, public domain. And in the programme, he's, he's kind of visibly moved when he talks about this. He's been fought in the street by individuals. He's had abuse hurled at him through whether it's in person or in social media. It's, it's very emotional watching. You can see how, how hard it's been for him, but in his eyes, he's come through it. He's overcome those challenges. It doesn't matter what he does now, um, he's confident he can overcome it. But it's only through going through several processes, several hard challenges, that he's got to the stage of being able to do what you can now. So I've been inspired by ADS Art. I hope you have too. Um, I believe what goes on in between our ears is, is hugely powerful but can, it can also really restrict what we what we do in our lives. Certainly as many of your students it's a kind of critical stage and I think we all need to 
myself included, need to understand more about what goes on in our heads and how we control that, that voice that tries to stop us doing things and tells us it's too tough, and tells us to stop. I really believe we all have the ability to, to run 27 marathons in 27 days if we wanted to. I'm sure many of you have no interest in doing that. Um, you've all got your own goals and aspirations. But what I hope I'll leave you with today is the confidence to go and pursue those goals and aspirations. Because fundamentally, if you have the motivation, if whatever it is you're doing, you're, you're motivated by and inspired by, and you constantly go and seek out challenges, challenge yourself day in, day out, I'm sure you'll be amazed by what you ultimately go on <coughs> to achieve over a longer period of time. <coughs> so, that's me today. Um, thanks for listening and hopefully you've taken something useful from that.